Hey guys, uh, so I've gotten a lot of questions lately about how to build Android 10, how to compile Android 10, how to compile Android Q, and um, ultimately it's exactly the same as compiling Android Pi or Oreo, um, but I wanted to go ahead and make a video to show how that's done because there's been so many questions about it and so much confusion on it. So what I have here is a virtual machine and I'm running uh, Ubuntu 18.04 or what's called Bionic Beaver and uh, I have a lot of videos for how to install Ubuntu or how to set up uh, Ubuntu in a virtual machine and that's what I'm currently doing is utilizing a virtual machine and uh, so if you need some help with that please check out those videos what I want to show is the step-by-step -step process of setting up and getting ready for build by establishing that build environment and once we've established that build environment we're going to download the code and we're going to start our build um, I do feel that what people are asking is how do I compile Android 10 but what they really want to know is how do I upgrade my device from Pi to 10 and so I don't know if we'll have time to look at all that but uh, we're gonna we're gonna start heading in that direction so what we have here is I've just brought up my uh, Firefox web browser here on the virtual machine and I just typed in the search bar to go to AOSP uh, Android open source project um, establishing a build environment and it took me to this page here so once I'm here uh, then you can start going through the process of setting up your build environment so this first page is a bunch of terminology and things and if you're not familiar with Android you can read through some of this it won't make very much sense but you can come back to this page to look at things as you start learning a little bit more and it will hopefully be a little more clear to you uh, the next most important thing is meeting the requirements what do you need to be able to build Android 10 uh, first thing right off the bat you need a 64-bit build environment for anything that's newer than Android 2.3 uh, it does say you can compile older versions on 32-bit systems but it means older than Android 2.3 so pretty much anything you're gonna be building for for any modern phone you're gonna need a 64-bit build environment that said you're also gonna need 250 gigabytes of free space uh, just to check out the code and then an extra 155 150 gigabytes to actually build it so it recommends 400 gigabytes of space to do this project um, it also recommends that if you're using a virtual machine you need at least 16 gigabytes of RAM so something definitely to consider if you do have lower end machines you either don't want to use a virtual machine or perhaps get some more RAM just in general because if you start getting down around 8 gigabytes of RAM you're definitely going to have problems with your build uh, it then goes on to talk about some different uh, things that you're going to need some binaries and Java development kits and we'll take a look at that here as we establish our build environment so now that we're ready to establish that build environment we come down here to the install instructions and notice that it says for Ubuntu 14.04 because that's still the uh, Google recommended platform for building Android open source project is 64-bit version of Ubuntu 14.04 and notice that it says it's recommended and I've built with it many many times it works really great uh, I've moved up to 18.04 because uh, the Java development kit number eight that you need is a lot harder to get on 1404 I do have videos for how to do that if you want to see them please check them out uh, on my channel so the next thing that we need is a terminal and if your terminal is not on the favorites bar over here on the side you can always find it by going to show application and typing terminal and there it goes so with that terminal now open uh, then we can start using this command so the first part of this command is sudo which is switch user and do something and if you don't specify what user which in this case they did not then the user is going to be the root user or the super user okay and so we want to switch user and do apt get install or go out to the repository get these programs and install them and those programs that we're going to go out to the repository get and install are all right here quite a big line of them so if we triple click on this line to highlight it we can go back to our terminal and middle click 
and it will paste it all in for us. So, depending on how you have uh, your pseudo permission set up, it may ask you for a password, and that password is going to be your user password for whatever user you use to log into the machine. Uh, in this case, it didn't ask me for it uh, because I already entered it earlier. So, in my build environment, I've already installed all of these, but I just wanted to show you the process of how it goes. So it'll start downloading and then installing each one of these into your machine. In my case, they're already there. Now there are then a few things about installing required packages for older variants. Um, these will not work very well. Uh, notice that it says version 1204 is not supported on master or recent releases so uh, and then same thing for 10 and 11 no longer supported so if you're trying to build with these machines it's probably not gonna work so I don't recommend it unless you're purposely trying to build something really old so uh, it does talk about um, using a separate output directory and you can set one up I don't do that it's just going to by default build an out directory for you. That's what I recommend for you getting started. If you do want to look into that, you can check it out. There's also setting up a Mac OS build environment. I don't have any Macintosh machines, fortunately, so um, you know you'll have to check that out on your own if that's something you want to try to do. Definitely beyond the scope of this uh, video that I have here. So then, of course, next is downloading the source. So when we go to downloading the source, it's going to ask us to do some things like installing repo and repo client and that sort of thing. But there's one step in here that it didn't mention. And when we look at our list of programs to install, it did not mention installing OpenJDK, which you're going to need. So what we can do is uh, aptitude search open JDK and <clears throat> I don't have aptitude installed so we'll go ahead and sudo apt install aptitude just like it suggests I say yes I want that so what we need to do is find out what versions of open JDK are available on the machine you're using and this is really important now for bionic beaver it's gonna have open JDK 8 which is what I need, uh, but it uh, it's important to check to what's available on your machine. I suppose we could have also done apt cache search and that would have worked just as well, but aptitude is my preferred tool. So, let's try that again. Aptitude search open JDK. So it's going to go out there and look at all the available packages to download and see which ones are available for you. So notice in here there's OpenJDK 11 and 8 are available for this particular machine that I'm using. If you're building uh, Oreo, Pi, or 10, you're going to need OpenJDK 8. That's what they're currently using. So how do you install that? Well, the easiest way is I double clicked on this to highlight it and I say sudo apt get install and then I middle click that open JDK 8 JDK to download that one it will download the JRE and the headless and a few other things of course I'm already on the newest version because I've already set up my build environment prior to this video because this is a machine I actually use so very important that you install OpenJDK 8. Now, if you're building something older than Oreo, Nugget was the turning point. So there's some portions of Nugget where you want to use OpenJDK 7 and some where you want to use 8. Most cases, you can probably just get by with having 8 for Nugget. But anything older than Nugget, Marshmallow and Lollipop, uh, you definitely want to utilize OpenJDK 7 for building those because that's how all the all the Java was written for those at that time. So this is great. That's set up our build environment and now we have our machine ready to start downloading the repository and getting ready for installing or correction compiling our custom ROM that we're going to build. Um, 
with that, when we start this, we're going to need some tools. So the tool that we need to start downloading is going to be the repo tool. So if you type CD to make sure you're at your home directory, you can type uh, PWD print working directory to tell you where you are. I'm in home Alaska Linux user. I can type ls to show me what's in there and if you need some help with some general commands for Linux I do have some videos for that. Please check it out. Uh, a lot more information for that. But we're going to get right into what we're doing here. Notice that it says make dir bin. So I highlight that insert it here. I already have a folder named bin so when I push the button it says it already exists. Uh, then it says make sure your path includes bin. So path is the way that uh, Linux will look to see what programs are available to be run to do anything. So you want to have bin in your path. And bin is stands for binary and that's where you're going to put this binary from Google. All right. So we'll go ahead and do that. This curl is going to go download that latest uh, binary from Google and if you type this and curl didn't work you need to sudo apt get install curl okay and of course I already have the newest version but if you had an error right there that's what you would do to fix that now we're going to chmod which means <clears throat> change or modify and a plus x which means we're going to make this readable and executable for everybody that has the proper permissions so now this tool is completely set up to go ahead and download what we need. Now in my case, I built, let me show you here, grab SD, there we go. So I built this machine only having a 50 gigabyte hard drive obviously that's not big enough to put everything on it. What I've recommended for others is if you're doing this for the first time when you set up your build machine you're gonna go ahead and set up having a 400 gigabyte hard drive to put everything on. Um, and I do have lots of videos for how to set that up if you would like to look at them. In my case I actually have a a uh, special drive that I utilize for this sort of thing because I share this drive between various virtual machines. So this next command might look a little bit odd. Oh, grep drive. So this next command that I'm going to run is specific for my machine. You won't need it but that is mounting a special drive that's 430 gigabytes in size that allows me to have some space to do what I need to do. And I utilize it this way because I share this drive between multiple virtual machines. Probably not something you're going to do, but there it is. So if I CD into drive where I've mounted my special drive, but in your case you could just make a directory for anything, uh, we see that in here I have nothing and I'm going to make directory and I'm going to call it Android actually I'll call it AOSP Android Open Source Project 10 so now we look and we see I have this directory AOSP 10 and I'm going to CD change directory to get into that AOSP 10 and I look inside and there's absolutely nothing in there And this is what it says here, make directory, whatever you want to call your working directory, change directory into that working directory, and then it says you're going to configure your name. So in my case, I've already configured my name, but you could go through here and say, okay, you know, um, paste that in there and then type my name or whatever your name is going to be. Mine is already configured so I don't need to do those steps but you can copy and paste those in there or you can use your name and you example literally and it will accept it so you don't have to register with them to tell them who you are. Um, I go ahead and use my my Git, GitLab account 
name and everything so that way it properly registers when I do upload anything if I happen to do that. Uh, most of you probably won't be uploading something so just using your name and you example works just fine but if you don't configure this it will ask you to configure it. So then we run the repo init command and this command is going to go to the repositories and initialize this repository. Okay. In this case, we just want to take it as it stands right here. We triple clicked it to highlight it and we put it in. Now if you're going to do other builds, other branches like we've seen in previous videos where you're going to do something old or maybe something specific, I just clicked on this uh, source codes, uh, tags and builds and open it up in a new window here and you can go through and choose whatever tag you want so for instance I would be dash B for branch and which branch I want and then I could say okay let's say I wanted this one and I put that in just like that and hit enter if I wanted a different branch in this case I want just the latest branch which whatever the latest branch is is marked as master and in this case it's going to be R14 what does that mean exactly so it's Android 10 revision 14. They've already made 14 revisions. Uh, if you go down to 9, Android 9 has 50 revisions that they've made over the years. Uh, Android 8.1, you know, it's up to 70 revisions. And then, of course, you can find even 8.0 and so on and so forth. So that's how you would use the branch. In this case, we just want the main branch. So by pressing enter, it's going to go ahead and go to that website, download this manifest, and read what it says. And to take it just a second here, as you can see the percentage bar moving. It does give you some examples, just like I gave you, of doing a different branch. and notice that a successful initialization ends with a message stating that the repo is initialized so that's what we're waiting for um, I do hope to not only do this for AOSP but also to do this for uh, lineage and maybe a few others just to show that it is the same process no matter which place you use but that it's very clear to you the user how to do this so it's going to take it just a minute here to complete. Once that is done, we'll move on with our next command, which is a very, very long command. It's going to take uh, several hours to complete, especially on my slow internet. And because of that, uh, this is where our video will end today. So lots of information in here, and then it says the repo has been initialized in this place. And since it's initialized, we can repo sync to download that repository. Now notice you can use repo sync or you can use repo sync dash J1 to say one thread, two threads, three threads, four threads, however many threads that you want. Uh, and also uh, QC to conduct quietly so you just uh, don't see all the information as it goes by. There's this repo command reference right here. Uh, there are a ton of repo command options. I've talked about uh, some of them in my previous videos and definitely worth checking those out. And maybe later we'll get to uh, look at some of these again. Um, some big ones a lot of people do just like a dash C for only the current manifest branch from the server so we don't get all the back branches and that sort of thing. Um, you know definitely different things to check out there but in our case we're just going to repo sync and download the latest version so hopefully that was helpful in setting up your build environment and starting the source code download uh, when I come back to this uh, we'll hopefully have all that downloaded and we can start working on actually building something